Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to explore what many consider to be the holy grail of investing, the best method to determine whether a stock is expensive or cheap. Whether you're a seasoned investor with a portfolio to manage or someone just starting out in the world of stocks, understanding how to assess the true value of a stock is absolutely crucial. Imagine walking into a store, looking at a product, and trying to decide whether the price tag matches the product's worth. In the world of stocks, we do something similar. We try to figure out if a company's stock is a good deal, a bit overpriced, or potentially a hidden gem. This process of determining the value of a stock is what we call stock valuation. It's the art and science of evaluating whether a stock is trading at a price that makes sense given its financial health, its growth prospects, and the broader market conditions. And in this video, we'll be your guide through this fascinating world of stock valuation. Now, you might be wondering why this is so important. Well, consider this. Making the right call on whether a stock is expensive or cheap can mean the difference between a profitable investment and a disappointing loss. And let's be honest, we all want our investments to grow, right? In this video, we're going to break down the key metrics and strategies that investors use to determine if a stock is expensive or a bargain. We'll talk about concepts like the price-to-earnings (PE) ratio, the price-to-earnings growth (PEG) ratio, dividend yield, and more. You'll learn how to use these metrics and techniques to form a clear picture of a stock's value. So, whether you're thinking about investing in a particular company, managing your stock portfolio, or simply expanding your financial knowledge, this video is designed to provide you with the tools and insights you need. By the end of it, you'll be well equipped to navigate the world of stock valuation and make more informed investment decisions. Whether you're looking for stocks that are a good deal, trying to avoid overpriced investments, or seeking the best approach for your portfolio, we've got you covered. With that said, let's dive into the exciting world of stock valuation and find out how to know whether a stock is expensive or cheap. In this video, we're delving into the art of valuing stocks and determining whether they are expensive or cheap. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's lay down some essential groundwork. Valuation, in the context of stocks, refers to the process of evaluating a company's stock to estimate its true worth. This involves considering various factors, metrics, and methodologies that help us gauge the stock's real value. Essentially, it's about answering the question, is this stock a good deal or is it overpriced? Stock valuation is a fundamental skill for investors, both seasoned and novice. It's about making informed investment decisions based on a rational assessment of a stock's value. In the world of stock valuation, there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Instead, we use various metrics and techniques to gain a comprehensive understanding of a stock's potential worth. To help you make sense of it all, we'll break down these methods one by one. Let's start our journey into stock valuation with one of the most fundamental metrics, the price-to-earnings (P.E.) ratio. The P.E. ratio is like the first brick in the foundation of stock valuation. It's a metric that investors use to assess whether a stock is expensive or cheap relative to its earnings. In essence, the P.E. ratio measures how much you are willing to pay for each dollar of a company's earnings. Here's how it's calculated. You take the current stock price and divide it by the company's earnings per share EPS. The result is a numerical representation of the market's expectations for the company's future earnings. A low P.E. ratio often suggests that a stock is relatively cheap, indicating that you're paying less for each dollar of earnings. On the other hand, a high P.E. ratio may imply that the stock is relatively expensive, suggesting that you're paying a premium for each dollar of earnings. But remember, P.E. ratios can vary widely between different industries and companies, and it's not the only metric to consider. So, while the P.E. ratio is a great place to start, it's just one piece of the puzzle in the fascinating world of stock valuation. 
In the following sections, we'll explore more metrics and strategies to give you a comprehensive toolkit for evaluating stocks. Now that we've introduced the price to earnings PE ratio, let's dive deeper into this fundamental valuation metric and explore its variations. In addition to the traditional PE ratio, there are two variations that you'll often encounter, the forward PE ratio and the trailing PE ratio. The forward PE ratio takes into account estimated future earnings of a company. It's based on what analysts predict the company will earn in the upcoming fiscal year. This ratio provides insight into market expectations and how the stock is valued based on anticipated earnings. The trailing P-E ratio, on the other hand, is based on historical earnings. It uses the company's actual earnings over the past 12 months. This ratio is a reflection of the company's recent performance, providing a more concrete picture of its past earnings. Understanding these variations allows you to assess a stock's value from different angles. It's important to consider both the forward and trailing P. E ratios to get a comprehensive view of how the market perceives the stock's potential. Now that you have a grasp of the P-E ratio and its variations, let's talk about a critical aspect of stock valuation, comparing a stock's P-E ratio to its industry average. Different industries have different dynamics, growth prospects, and risk levels. As a result, they tend to have distinct average P-E ratios. For example, technology companies may have higher average P-E ratios because they're expected to grow rapidly, while utilities might have lower average P-E ratios due to their steadier, but slower, growth. So, when evaluating a stock's P-E ratio, it's not enough to look at the number in isolation. You should also compare it to the average P-E ratio for companies in the same industry. If a stock has a P-E ratio much higher than its industry peers, it might be overvalued. Conversely, if it has a P-E ratio significantly lower, it could be undervalued. This industry comparison adds a crucial layer of context to your stock valuation, ensuring you're not only assessing the stock in isolation but also in the broader context of its industry. It's a fundamental step in understanding whether a stock is expensive or cheap in relation to its peers. Now, let's delve into another powerful tool for evaluating whether a stock is expensive or cheap, the price-to-earnings growth, PEG, ratio. The PEG ratio is a sophisticated metric that blends the price-to-earnings, PE, ratio with a company's growth rate. It's like adding another layer of context to your valuation process by considering the company's growth potential. To calculate the PEG ratio, you simply divide the PE ratio by the expected earnings growth rate. The result is a number that offers a more comprehensive perspective on a stock's value. Here's how to interpret it. A PEG ratio of 1 is typically considered fair value. A PEG ratio above 1 might suggest that the stock is potentially overvalued as you're paying a premium for its expected growth. Conversely, a PEG ratio below 1 could indicate that the stock is potentially undervalued, signifying a better deal considering its growth potential. The PEG ratio is a valuable tool for investors aiming to assess a stock's value in the context of its growth prospects. It assists you in answering the crucial question, is this stock reasonably priced considering its expected growth? By incorporating the PEG ratio alongside the PE ratio, you can make more informed decisions about whether a stock is expensive or cheap relative to its growth potential. In this section, we'll focus on two critical aspects of stock valuation, the quality of a company's earnings and its level of debt. Earnings quality, when assessing whether a stock is expensive or cheap, it's vital to examine the quality of a company's earnings. High-quality earnings are characterized by consistency and growth. Companies with earnings that steadily increase over time are often seen as more attractive to investors. Earnings quality reflects a company's financial health and stability. Debt, another critical factor, is a company's debt level. 
High levels of debt can pose a risk to a company's financial stability. Companies with excessive debt may face challenges in servicing it, which can impact their stock valuation. As an investor, you should consider a company's debt load when determining whether a stock is expensive or cheap. Earnings quality and debt are crucial components of the broader evaluation process. They can significantly influence your judgment of whether a stock is fairly priced or potentially overvalued. When analyzing these aspects alongside other metrics we've discussed, you can build a more comprehensive understanding of a stock's valuation. In this section, we'll take the theoretical concepts we've discussed and bring them to life through real-world case studies and practical examples. These case studies will serve as a bridge between theory and practice, allowing you to understand how to apply valuation methods in the context of actual investments. We'll explore a variety of stocks from different industries and dissect their valuations using the tools we've covered. By doing so, we aim to provide you with actionable insights and a deeper understanding of how professionals evaluate stocks and make informed decisions. Case Study 1, Tech Titan Inc. Let's begin with Tech Titan Incorporated, a leading technology company. We'll calculate its P. E ratio and compare it to the industry average to assess whether the stock is potentially overvalued or undervalued. We'll also look at its PEG ratio to understand the role of growth in the valuation process. Case Study 2 Steady Eddy Corporation. Next up is Steady Eddy Corporation, a well established utility company known for its stability. We'll discuss how its P-E ratio differs from that of high-growth tech companies and why that's expected. Examining the dividend yield will also provide insights into whether this stock might be considered a more conservative investment. Case Study 3, Growth Gem Ltd. In our third case study, we'll analyze Growth Gem Limited, a relatively new player in the market with substantial growth potential. We'll look at the PEG ratio to understand why it's a critical metric for such companies. The case study will illustrate how assessing growth in conjunction with valuation can help investors identify opportunities. Through these case studies, you'll see how investors consider not only individual metrics but also the interplay between multiple metrics. By doing so, they form a comprehensive view of a stock's value and decide whether it's a wise investment or potentially overpriced. The practical examples presented here will empower you to apply these valuation methods to your investment choices, helping you make well-informed decisions. Ultimately, understanding how these metrics work in practice is a valuable skill in your investment journey. So, Let's dive into these case studies and uncover the art of evaluating whether a stock is expensive or cheap in real-world scenarios. As we conclude our exploration of stock valuation and determining whether a stock is expensive or cheap, it's essential to recap the key takeaways from this video. Valuation is at the heart of making informed investment decisions. It's the process of assessing the true worth of a stock to determine whether it's a good deal or potentially overpriced. To do this effectively, we've discussed several key metrics and strategies. The price-to-earnings (P/E) ratio is a foundational metric that helps evaluate whether a stock is expensive or cheap. A low P-E ratio suggests potential undervaluation, while a high P-E ratio might indicate overvaluation. We've examined the significance of industry comparisons to understand how different industries have different average P-E ratios. The price-to-earnings growth PEG, ratio takes valuation to the next level by combining the P-E ratio with a company's growth rate. A PEG ratio of 1 is typically seen as fair value, helping investors assess whether they're paying a reasonable price considering a stock's growth potential. The dividend yield can provide valuable insights, especially for income-oriented investors. A higher dividend yield may indicate potential undervaluation. However, it's essential to consider it alongside other factors. Earnings quality and a company's level of debt are fundamental aspects of stock valuation. 
Companies with consistent earnings and manageable debt levels are often seen as more attractive investments. In the practical world of investing, we've explored case studies and practical examples to illustrate how these metrics and strategies can be applied to real investment decisions. Understanding the interplay between these metrics is vital in forming a comprehensive view of a stock's value. Stock valuation is not a one-size-fits-all process, it requires a careful analysis of multiple factors. When you use these methods collectively, you gain the ability to determine whether a stock is expensive or cheap in the context of your investment objectives. By putting these concepts into practice, you can make more informed choices in your investment journey, ultimately aiming for your financial goals. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of stock valuation. If you found this information valuable, please like and subscribe for more insightful content. Here's to making well-informed investment decisions and achieving your financial objectives. Happy investing!